welcome to the Entrepreneurs Network. I'm Rick Anthony. Our topic today is uh, obesity. Now, you might wonder, what's that got to do with entrepreneurship? Well, I'm going to explain that to you in just a minute or two. But the topic is an important one because it's reached epidemic proportions in this country and, in fact, around the world. My guest today is a, an entrepreneur who has taken on this cause, call it social entrepreneurialism, because she expects to make a living from what she's doing and build a company around what she's doing, as well as serving millions of people uh, who need information about how to eat, how to be healthy, how to take care of themselves so they don't grow up to be unhealthy people with all of the consequences around that. In this country, for example, this epidemic we're experiencing of childhood obesity in particular uh, has some very interesting implications, including national security and whether or not uh, the next generation will be able, equipped, uh, to defend this country in the way that we must. At any rate, my guest today is Ariane Smith. Welcome to the Entrepreneurs Network. Thank you so much. Delighted Rick. to have you with us, and thank you for coming down from New York. It's so a pleasure. You're, you're not a local, <laughs> no? but this, uh, this topic uh, goes, uh, transcends borders, and as you will be explaining to us. As we always do, mm -hmm. where did you come from? And then we'll bridge into how did you decide and why did you decide to devote your time, treasure, and talent uh, to, uh, I guess, a one-woman campaign up to now <laughs> uh, to bring this message to parents and children and other people uh, who's, uh, whom you have engaged in waging this battle. Yes. Um, I was born in New Jersey. Uh, I That's grew up too bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> but I'm bummed. <laughs> Um, my parents were famous ballet dancers, so I toured around the world when I was very, very young. Mm. Uh, so that was a great experience for me. I would be backstage and watching these... Uh, what company were oh, you with? American Ballet Theater, the Joffrey, Harkness Ballet. Wow. So uh, my mom was a prima ballerina. My dad, early on, uh, was in film. Uh, he was uh -huh. in uh, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers and a bunch no of kidding. things. No yeah, kidding. Yeah, I love so that film. I, I, I grew up in <clears> that, uh, <throat> you know, that whole kind of thing. and. Mm. Uh, I got inspired just watching the beauty of and the magic. So I've always loved uh, fairy tales and, um, and well, I, the cooking arts because I experienced yeah. many different kinds of foods all over the world very mm -hmm. early on. Um, and then I got into uh, I got into theater and found that I had a talent for uh, performing for kids. So mm -hmm. I created my own one woman show. Basically, I'm mm -hmm. an interactive storyteller. And uh, I got Principally in New York? Uh, in the tri-state area, basically, yeah. but people have flown me mm -hmm. you know, everywhere. Um, and through my storytelling, because interactive storytelling is basically about uh, having the kids integrated into the actual story that yes. you're telling them. So I really know what kids like. I know the kind of non sequiturs <clears throat> that they like, mm -hmm. the kind of... Um, literal comments that maybe go over their head, but they kind of get it. So mm -hmm. if I use a big word in the proper context, they get it. Um, and I just got inspired. I, I, it was a connection for over 20 years that I've had. And then I, you know, it got more and more popular. And then soon Fortune 500 companies were hiring me. Food Network hired me. Um, to ten, tell stories? Yeah. It's to, you know, they're having a, let's say they're having a party for their employees and the yeah. kids are there. And so they would hire me. And then, you know, like pretty soon it grew into like a $10 billion um, food retailer hired me to come in. So it's always been the food mm -hmm. fairy tale connection mm -hmm. for me. Um, but in all the years that I've been doing it, which is more than 20 at this point, um, I noticed a growing trend in that the children were starting to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And um, I thought to myself, what can I do to, to yes. affect some sort of change in this? Um, so since I really know what kind of stories they like, um, mm -hmm. I thought, let me create something that will go more globally so that, yes, I can entertain 10 kids, 600 kids. Mm -hmm. but if I do something that has platforms and legs to it, I can affect more families. Um, Who pioneered uh, storytelling on television? What was her name? Uh, the, the puppet. Oh, right. Um, with, uh, oh, it's terrible. Oh, yeah. No, it's yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, one of those moments. Um, yes. with the, with the, it looked like a sheep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, anyway, was, didn't she pioneer? I on think television, she was anyway. one of, yeah, one yeah. of. And then there was, uh, of course, Mr. Rogers uh, and all course. that. Of oh, course. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, he was a little slow for my taste, but anyway, I'm a <coughs> fabulous mm -hmm. uh, artist, and I just have a connection mm -hmm. with kids. Like I just get them, and they get me, and so we have this integrated thing. Mm -hmm. And so I thought to myself, well, okay, 
ultimately what I want to do is create a television series for this to, to take it all over, right? right? But let me start with a book series. So I wrote the first book in a six book series. Um, book one did really well. I sold with absolutely no advertising, like 8,000 copies, mostly at my mm -hmm. live events mm -hmm. and all that. Um, and it got into like the brick and mortar stores and got released as an ebook. Book two is coming out very soon. Um, and that gave me the ability to take it to uh, major broadcasters in Europe and say, look, I'm going to be producing this as a television mm -hmm. series and mobile content. This is how I've released this right. uh, through live events, you know, and uh, upcoming musical that's in the works and all that. And they got very excited about all it. All around healthy eating, nutrition. Well, I never, yeah, I never used the word healthy, and that's okay. kind of my thing. Um, I know why, don't, that, uh, why don't you use healthy? Because adults hear it and they cringe. I see them cringe. <laughs> and kids are like, oh, if it's healthy, it's got to taste nasty. I don't oh. want it. Mm. So I do it in a very subliminal way. Mm -hmm. So in other words, when, when you wrap something around a story, people get it. If you, if you tell someone, eat, the, you know, eat this, it's healthy. Yeah. Ew, I don't want to do that. But if it's, in, if it's integrated in a story, then they get it and they want to try it. So you're taking a multimedia approach to getting this message about nutritious eating. Yes, correct. <laughs> um, and the audiences are adults, parents, and grandparents, I suppose, uh, caregivers, yes. and children. Yes. Uh, children above the ages of? Well, the book, uh, each platform has its own age demographic. So oh. the book is 5 to 11. Okay. Television series is 6 to 8. My live events are 3 to 12. Oh, you've got to go. <laughs> and my storybook videos are 3 to 5-year-olds. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, so basically 3 to 12-year-olds. Um, and, and this book, Enchanted Time, is one in a series of how many? Six. Six? Yes. Book one, The Delicious mm -hmm. Adventure Series. What's this all about, and where can people get it? They can get it online. They can get it at any bookstore, um, even specialty stores. If mm -hmm. they don't have it, they'll... Mm -hmm. You know, get it. It's even in Hudson News at the airports and all that. Really? Yeah. But mostly I sell it when I do live events um, because people will want to do a book signing with me afterwards. Right. And like, for example, when I did one for Food Network, I do my storytelling. And then my chefs come out and they make recipes from the book. Yeah. So the kids get the whole hands-on experience and mm -hmm. the parents are there. And I can't tell you how many parents have said to me, oh, my goodness, my child just tried avocado. I can't believe it, you know, <laughs> and because like it. it was, yeah, because yeah. it was wrapped up in yeah. the story that I just told them. So it's not like do this because you have to, just do it because you, maybe you want to. So each book is a series of chapters interspersed with nutritious, not healthy, nutritious <laughs> recipes. You can say healthy. <laughs> <laughs> nutritious recipes. Yes, and I didn't, um, you know, it has everything, there's a lot of fruits and vegetables, but there's also a really great uh, macaroni and cheese recipe in there mm -hmm. because I wanted it to be accessible mm -hmm. to people. Um, the main thing for me is to make it fun and to bring families back together again mm. to do something like, okay, say the grandparents are taking care of the children. Yes. Okay. Let me read you a chapter and then let's make the recipe. So it gives them an activity mm -hmm. to do with the children. And to me, that's what's really broken mm -hmm. right now in getting back, rooting back to the childhood obesity thing. It's like, don't put your child in front of the TV with a bag of chips. If, do if, something, you know. If you've come up with a better way, then why haven't, uh, the people who are spending an enormous amount of money um, preaching to us mm -hmm. about healthy food, healthy living, et cetera, et cetera. Why haven't they adopted this? Because they're taking the same old pedagogical approach mm -hmm. to screaming in your face, mm -hmm. you're fat, you've got to do something about it, these are the three things you should do, mm -hmm. don't eat these foods, eat these foods. And I think we're recoiling from that because, frankly, it's, it's part of all of that in-your-face communication yeah. these days. I agree with you. Yours is a different approach. It's a different approach. Um, and, and are you getting the kind of reception you've been describing? Because it is different, because it seems to work better than the in-your-face approach? Yes. And also because the content is compelling. It's an adventure. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when, you, when, when, when I'm talking to a broadcaster or, you know, like I have global distribution already in place and licensing and merchandising agents and all mm -hmm. that, um, they're seeing all the rollout that's going to come from that. And, yeah. you know, they, they see dollar signs, so that's all good well, for them and good for me, you know. Let's go back to the business yeah. side. Yeah. You, you are a business person uh, with some success. <clears throat> this has been not self-funded, but I think you said debt 
You've, yes. you've borrowed money to launch. I did. Um, a quarter of a million dollars to bring it to mm -hmm. where it is now. Um, so you're on the hook for a quarter. A quarter of a million dollars at 2.4%, though. That's annually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, I feel really good about still, that. <laughs> okay. It's still debt. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, and you, you're going to be looking for some serious money soon. Yes. And how much will that be? Uh, 1.25 up front and then uh, 400000 per month for mm -hmm. the next five months. <clears throat> so we're talking about $3.25 million um, to get into production for the television series and mobile yeah. content. And then as soon as I get s the minute I start production, and that's all lined up right now, mm -hmm. then the broadcasters give me uh, pre-sales. Mm -hmm. So then I can fund the rest of it and keep mm -hmm. going. And on a more of a financial level or like business person level, what's interesting for an investor to uh, get on board is they're not just going to be investing in a TV series or a book. They're investing in the entire company. Now yes. that's uh, the media company. Yeah, it's six revenue streams, and mm -hmm. it kind of makes me a portfolio manager in some ways. Yes. So, for example, television series takes uh, 14 months to produce. Mobile content is very inexpensive to mm -hmm. produce, so I can start <coughs> feeding all the distribution channels mm -hmm. globally prior and start branding it, right? Mm -hmm. As I see fit, uh, of course, with my board of directors and all that, you know, with their permission, um, I can move the money around to whatever is taking mm -hmm. off. So, so one platform feeds the other. Once television series is, you know, halfway through the first season, right. then licensing and merchandising rolls <coughs> out. Hmm. I, I'm wondering, again, uh, why you've been successful. And I don't mean that for the sound of it. No, but I'm, I'm thinking about other people who have sat in that chair. Right who have come up with games for kids, mm -hmm. uh, uh, websites, any number of people who have been trying, not with the same message you have, right. and maybe that's it, this is a very compelling message, but trying to, to provide fun, entertainment, education, information, and so on, to kids through, and, and, and adults, mm -hmm. bringing parents and kids together, to your point, bringing the family back mm -hmm. together again. And they have not succeeded. It hasn't been for the bright, uh, experienced business people who have raised serious money, mm -hmm. but they haven't succeeded. I think um, one of the things that I'm really big on, and maybe this is part of it, uh, I'm not really sure, but it's my inkling. I do everything kind of backwards, in other words. So I will, <laughs> and even in Don't the tell your investors. No, 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 but I mean in a good way. Yeah. Um, I will trade, I started the trademark process for Enchanted Time because I knew that the title was catchy, mm -hmm. right? And the very first meeting I had w with a big Hollywood guy, um, and he said, um, Enchanted Time, that's, that's a great title. You own it? And I was like, yeah, I mm -hmm. do. Because I knew mm -hmm. it was like, whoa, no, 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 yeah, we're not yeah, going yeah, yeah. there. So I started that way back before. I borrowed the money to roll the company out and to do it way before I have even incorporated. Because mm -hmm. in the, that was in 2007. I knew, mm -hmm. okay, I could see the trend that, like, I'm not going to get this rate for much longer, so I'm going to do it. So right. I do things ahead of time, like, you know, I have the animation studio, I have the director lined up, I have all the pieces in so, place. So you get all the resources in place. Yes. Then you figure out yeah. how to use them? Uh, it's not, no, I know how to use them. I know how, you know, I outsource yes. everything, and I know yes. how that's going to happen. It's just when it's ready to go and the last piece in place is the, you know, major capital, right. basically, we're ready to go. We already okay. have everything lined up. Everybody's right. already like put in writing, yes, we're going to buy this. Yes. It's, so that, I think, is different. Um, mm -hmm. It's one thing to, to take money and try to launch. Yes. All right? It's another thing to take money and go, once I have this money, mm -hmm. we're launching. But, we're done. But uh, check me on that. Okay. When you say that European t television networks mm -hmm. have said, as soon as you're ready, we're going to give you money. Right. What kind of a commitment is that? Is it is it a handshake? Is it in writing? No, is it's there, in writing. Is there money been put in a bank someplace or it's an account? A, yeah, it's in writing. It'll be released. This, okay. Yeah. So the the deal with broadcasters, and again, um, I think I mentioned to you when we were just chit chatting before the show. Yeah. Um, it, it's been uh, it's taken me four years to learn broadcast television. It took me a year to learn publishing. That's mm -hmm. a little easier. Mm -hmm. Broadcast television is fairly complicated with all the different players and the territories. And mm -hmm. so, you know, for example, I have someone who's handling uh, selling in all the different territories. Well, she launched globally Dora the Explorer mm -hmm. and SpongeBob SquarePants. So I have some really heavy yes. hitters that have those connections. But basically, um, 
they, because I'm a newer company, right? Yes. If I were Disney, they would give me the upfront sure. money. Yeah. But they want to make sure that when they sign that check, that yes. I'm not going to have to give that check back, that I can produce the goods. So that's why they're waiting. Mm -hmm. And and again, it's unusual. A lot of um, people in the in the industry in my position would have sold this to a major broadcaster for ten grand and walked away from yeah. it. And I won't do that because I know the value. What of is it. the exit? Is there an exit? Uh, the exit is going to be at least seven to eight years because okay. I want to. So this is slow, slow to grow. It's it's that you want to make the money off of the licensing and merchandising. For sure. example, I'll give you a, a comparable. Um, this is an amazing thing. Uh, E1 Entertainment did similar to what I'm doing. In other words, they held all the rights to, and mm -hmm. I, I still own 100% of everything mm -hmm. right now, um, uh, to uh, uh, a show called Peppa Pig. And we don't know it here. What is it? Peppa, P-E-P-P-A, right. pig. pig. It's a really fun. It's very clever. Um, and they launched it six years ago in the UK. Okay, so they got a couple of UK broadcasters right. on board. And, you know, it, it grew. People just loved it, right? Um, last year, according to NPD data, Peppa Pig, just for merchandising and licensing in the UK alone, mm -hmm. made 324.4 million USD just in toy mm -hmm. retail. So the numbers for children's properties are huge. Yes. Um. I don't know what, if I answered your question, though. Did no, I? you did. You okay. Did. Yeah, you did. Uh, and it's the, I think it's the right answer as well. <clears throat> how large a company is it now, and how large a company, a staff, do you think you're going to need to play out all of the, the, the media outlets you're talking about? Okay. That's a great question. Um, to keep everything lean and mean, I outsource, mm -hmm. which um, I love doing. I have partners all over the world right now, and that's mm -hmm. intriguing to me. Um, for example, when we go into production, and you know, I've produced animation around this to be able to show broadcasters what it's going to look yes. like and all that. Um, I have production partners. Uh, they have a hundred people in their studios. The animation house is based in New Delhi, India, but they also have partners in Poland. Mm -hmm. um, they did all of the Hanna Barbera. They're mm. doing the upcoming Garfield TV series. Yeah. So that's all lined up. Yes. And these are people that I've worked with that I trust. I mean, at the mm. end of the day, mm. I want to work with people. That I like. Absolutely right. Yeah. Life is way too short to yes. spend time, you know, and it'll be the same thing. Don't worry about your back. Yeah. Yes. Be the same thing with him. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Oops, <laughs> I turned mine down. Yeah. I forgot. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. But um, so it'll be hundreds of people that I am creating jobs for. Mm -hmm. I also have another project which we don't really need to get into today, but um, it's a tween mystery series, and I'm going to be mystery series. Yeah, it's, it's again really about fun. nutrition. No, this is more about literacy, but it's, it's, oh. I wrote it, I wrote that book even before this <laughs> Are one. you going to deal with all the social problems as a storyteller, as, as an a entrepreneur? As a storyteller, yeah. yeah. I, why not? Uh, you're absolutely what right. What more why could not? I... If the formula works, if you don't mind my calling it yeah, a formula. Yeah, no, it is a formula. If the formula works, why not find other applications for yeah. it? So, yeah. and, and exact same business model. Yeah. Book comes out this year, then I build off of it. Now mm -hmm. that particular project, I am going to set up animation studio in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And I found a really fabulous young animator. Uh, we did a very different style of animation, mm -hmm. uh, found objects with animation. Right. He got it immediately and I said, you're my head <coughs> animator. So I will set up studios there. So, you know, that one is very inexpensive to produce compared to this one. This Does this fun. lend itself to internet radio as well? A radio show? Um, I'm rolling for, probably for adults rather than children. Yeah, well, that's on well, the other hand, why not? My, yeah, I, I would um, love to do that. I'm I'm launching a social media campaign for Enchanted Time yes. right now. Yes. Um, that, believe it or not, is being outsourced to people in the Philippines, and so they're going to be handling all of that because mm -hmm. they they have a great mm -hmm. command of they understand it. They have great command I of have language. I have a friend of mine in the advertising business, and rather than go to India, or mm -hmm. they went to the Philippines, yeah. and they said. The, the, the creativity is wonderful. Mm -hmm. The graphics are great. The technology is is, yeah. is state of the art, and these people are eager, yeah, and working their butts off. The the, the woman that is and heading for it a up, relatively small amount of money. Woman who's heading it up knows way more about. So I'm embarrassed to say she knows way. She's t she's educating me. So, yeah. uh, you know, I like I said, I, I love to surround myself with people mm. that are so smart and and know mm -hmm. more than I do. I learn from them. 
Uh, let me go back to the subject for a yeah. moment. Uh, oh, childhood obesity. Well, obesity generally, but particularly right. childhood obesity. What, what is the definition of obesity? It's a 30% BMI. So if you're over 30% of what you should weigh for your height and whatever, mm -hmm. you're considered obese. So one in three children in the U.S. are considered mm -hmm. obese at this point. Mm -hmm. um, and, then th and then it goes down from there, but there are children that are just overweight. Yes. Um, but, but is it the result of poor eating habits, lack of physical activity, because they, they live such sedentary lives mm -hmm. these days. Um, w which of those two is the, the more the culprit than the other? Um, I would tend to say it's processed foods. Processed foods. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when I grew up and I was a child, we weren't ingest injecting all the meat with hormones and yeah. growth this and, you know, make it more profitable yes. so the cow is bigger. And I look at children these days, and you know, young adults, and they're, they're, like cows. they're huge. They're, they're, they're like so tall. I, yeah. I'm like, you know, at, hmm. in at turn of the century, in the early 1900s, the average woman was four foot eleven. No, I'm I'm five two. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm I'm considered petite, and I didn't wasn't one back then. But um, it's amazing how 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 we've grown, and I think mm -hmm. that there's something in either it's environmental or mm -hmm. it's within the food chain. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're they're not even labeling when they're you know putting uh, all sorts of weird stuff in our in our corn, and you know it, it's yeah. We used to look to the Japanese, mm -hmm. even the Chinese, mm -hmm. uh, Asian countries, as models of good nutrition mm -hmm. because of what they ate, particularly what they didn't eat, mm -hmm. and the way they ate. We also look to Western Europe, parts of Western Europe anyway. Uh, the, the Italians, for example, love their pasta, love all the things we're mm -hmm. told we're not supposed to eat. They drink wine, they mm -hmm. all that stuff, and they seem, in the past anyway, they seem to have had pretty good record of relatively comparatively good health. I don't know if that's still true. Um, the older generations, because I travel a lot, so yes. I'm, I'm watching, you know. Uh, yes. I think the younger generations, now that... Uh, We've ruined them. Some of the fast food chains, I won't mention them, have infiltrated. Yes. I'm, I'm seeing young adults, mm -hmm. and they don't look like they used to. Mm -hmm. um, and it, <coughs> it's a problem. But I do think it is uh, more like you mentioned before, sedentary. You know, we're in front of our computers. We're mm -hmm. in front of, uh, and people are not taking meals together. They don't make the time. You know, I grew up in a European, my mm -hmm. mom being French. We would sit at the dinner table for two, three hours and have this philosophical conversations yes. over food. We'd be eating one dish, and my mom would be talking about a recipe that she saw for another dish. I yes. mean, it was really a communal thing. That I'd like to see people get a bit more back to that, I, uh, even I hope, if it's once a week. I hope your parents still enjoy good health. Yeah, they're great. And they're are they really still dancing? No. No, not at <laughs> They all. wish, but yeah. <laughs> my mom gets frustrated. You <clears> know, um, mm -hmm. as dancers get older, yes. they get aches and pains. Are they in New York? They're in New Jersey. New Jersey? Yeah. I'm are, very close. Are I they still to involved in the arts? They must be. Yeah, well, they, they're involved in, in what I'm doing, and they're, uh -huh. just, um, they're taking care of all sorts of uh, uh -huh. stray animals, and uh -huh. I, they fill up their time. I don't know. Wonderful. <laughs> That's great. Well, um, I wish you well. Thank you. Uh, for an, any number of reasons. Uh, I, again, I've had uh, women uh, like you sitting in that chair and coming to the meetings we have, the Entrepreneurs mm -hmm. Network. And the stories I've heard from so many of them, at least until recently, is how difficult it is for a woman to make it in the entrepreneurial community, to raise money, to be taken seriously, uh, to have credibility, mm -hmm. uh, particularly when they're presenting themselves to a group of uh, angels, most of whom are all male. Um, and some of them say, I, I'm intimidated by that. And I, I wondered why they didn't come to my meetings, and I was told, I'm, ju I'm just uncomfortable with that much testosterone in, in the room. It's changing, though. It More of them are coming to the meetings. Some of them make the best presentations mm -hmm. uh, than their count male counterparts. Uh, maybe it's because they're better, st better storytellers, but they truly do tell better stories mm -hmm. about what they're up to, why they think it's compelling, why they think they deserve funding. Uh, I've noted that as I've watched in every meeting, five presentations, many of them now and increasingly by women. You must be very, very good, not only as a storyteller uh, trying to get your message across, but when you present yourself to other people whose money you want or other resources you want. It's interesting That's for me. That's the real test that, of a storyteller. Yes. Um, for me, I, 
I actually relish it because I can walk into a room and I don't mean to be denigrating in any way, but you know, it's a room. I call it a room full of suits. Okay. Yeah. And it's all it's all pretty much all men. Yep. And um, I feel like I'm different. So they all want to come up and why am I here? What am I doing? Mm -hmm. You know. And I, for each different occasion, mm -hmm. maybe it's a suit I'm wearing, maybe it's not. It's more mm -hmm. casual, whatever. But um, I already feel like they want to know why I'm there right. and what I'm doing. So for me, I, I feel special. So to me, I see that as mm -hmm. a plus. I have found that a lot of men have helped me out, like given me a leg up. I mean, mm -hmm. Like I mentioned when I started to learn about television, uh, one guy who was, he knew everybody in the business took me to all the best parties and all the, introduced mm -hmm. me, made those introductions. And so I find that men have helped me mm -hmm. inordinately and, and I'm very grateful and they're all mm -hmm. people that I'm friends with and continue <coughs> to you know, keep in touch and some of them are on my advisory board mm -hmm. and all that. Um, I have found that it's more difficult for women to help each other out, and I don't know really? what that's about. Um, I've helped a lot of women out, and uh, it hasn't been reciprocal. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I thought, let me give back. You yes, know, I'm, I'm sure. a, a female. Yeah. I can make introductions right. for you. Not reciprocal. Not mm -hmm. appreciated. And I don't know whether it's that um, for a man in the business, I'm not threatening because mm -hmm. I'm not going to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And maybe for another woman who is trying so hard to right. get a leg up, m maybe that's, but I don't yeah. know, that's a whole, that's a whole, uh, we could devote another whole show to gender issues yeah. and, 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 and all that. And as a matter of fact, we will be in an internet radio show I just launched. Oh, where we'll okay. be talking about Which female I heard about, entrepreneurs yes. <laughs> as well. Uh, in fact, we just did one. And, and her, as a matter of fact, uh, she is, uh, her name is Denise Aquilante. Okay. She is the daughter of a, a Tony Aquilante, who is a catering business. Right. But she is she has her own line now of healthy snacks. Oh, I'd love to meet her. For adults, <laughs> there's also a woman here in this market, and you should know her or know of her. Her name is uh, Denise Devine. Okay. She was with Campbell Soup. Was concerned about what her children and other children were eating. Right. She left uh, Campbell Soup, started an R&D company, and now has her own line of healthy snacks. Wow. Uh, beverage and a healthy snack bar of some mm -hmm. kind. Um, you know, the, the stories like this, they're just popping up. and mm -hmm. Great people with great causes, all I guess under the rubric of social entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. double bottom line, as I'm sure yours is. Uh, that's a good question. When you were successful, wildly successful financially, how will you use the money? What causes will you support? Or do you have in mind your own nonprofit at some point? I this, this is the for-profit. This is for-profit, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I will have a non-profit, um, certain proceeds for certain parts, depending mm -hmm. on what my board of directors, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I'll have to defer to them mm -hmm. at a certain point. Um, I would like it to go to certain causes. Um, one of my very near and dear to my hearts are uh, um, girls in China. Mm -hmm. that are in the uh, orphanages. Mm -hmm. I would like to do something to help them. I'm also yeah. really into animal rights. So um, mm -hmm. some of the animal yes. sanctuaries and what have you, I would like to give a certain amount of that. Are you into nutrition for, uh, for animals as well? I cook, I cook for my, I have two dogs. Yeah. I don't have my own children, believe it or not, <laughs> but I have two furry critters and I cook for them. Uh -huh. So I make everything, you know, mm -hmm. I do uh, rice with garlic and uh, so organic chicken. And, they're you know, the healthiest pooches on the block. So. The most pampered pooches, yeah. No, I'm that, ashamed yeah. to say I, I kind of <laughs> dote on them. How will you know that you succeeded? Um, when I can get into production with the television okay. series. That's no. my main... That's the breakaway? That's the breakaway. That's and, the breakaway. and after that, okay. it's like, it's, it's, yeah. I'm done. I'm, I'm You're good. You're absolutely I mean, convinced of that. You, you know in your heart that all the pieces are in place, yes. and now all you have to do is hit a couple of buttons, yep. a couple of triggers, and you will... Be on auto, almost automatic. Yeah, my my biggest um, because of all the planning and the upfront work you've yes. done. That's a good lesson. Yeah, my, that's a good lesson. My biggest um, challenge has been getting to the right um, uh, investors because yeah. on the East Coast, people understand uh, widgets tech and, 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 tech. and, yeah, and real right. estate and whatever. So yeah. I just started going this to LA. This is a little gossamer. Yeah, a little gossamer. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I just started going to L.A. And in one trip to L.A. week before last, I, I made some of the right connections. Right. So, And it's not that they're not here on the East Coast. I yes. just have to get to them. You're right. It is tougher here. Yeah. And the, the Philadelphia market, well, like, I guess it's true of the tri-state market as well, uh, tends to be a little parochial, mm. uh, particularly angel investors at any rate. 
I wish you well. The, the book again so is uh, the first in the series, Enchanted Time, and is available at your website or Amazon or in any airport, I think you said. Yes. <laughs> right. And the television series will be uh, sometime next year? I would like to be able to say by October when I go into the next big market. That's I great. have at well, least the MOU in my mm -hmm. back pocket to, to start going. I wish you well. And, uh, it's, it's an important cause. Thank you. And uh, you're setting a good example as well for your agenda. Thank particular. you so much, Rick. Thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure. Glad to have you here. That wraps up another show of the Entrepreneurs Network. I'm Rick Anthony. Until next time, take very good care of yourselves. Uh, get a copy of the book and be sure to eat nutritiously, whether you're an adult or a child.